Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Night. I am excited about this one because I'm joined by my wife, Margot, and also by Martin and Jeanette Oji, who we have known <laughs> now for probably a couple of decades, I think. Yep. Yeah. And uh, they have all <laughs> kinds <young>. of really <laughs> good stories. So uh, we get to hear those today. Um, I want to jump right in because I'm, I'm really excited about our topic. Solid as a rock, developing inner strength. Developing inner strength has been a, a ch challenge and a quest mm -hmm. and a journey of mine through my whole life. I have had some successes and way more failures. I don't know if you guys feel the same yes. way. Yeah, Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, sure. But yes. part of developing inner strength is being okay with those failures and knowing mm -hmm. that it's part of the process. Mm -hmm. I want to start with a scripture in 1 Samuel 16 and verse 7 in the voice. It says, Take no notice of his looks or his height. He is not the one, for the eternal one does not pay attention to what humans value. Humans only care about the external appearance, but the eternal considers the inner character. Mm. This mm -hmm. says that God cares about the inner character. And here, this is God talking about David and, and his inner character. Let me just ask a question, Martin. How would you define character? What is that? Man, when I think of character, I think of the ability to do something when no one is watching, the ability to push yourself mm. when you don't feel like, the ability to push yourself when your emotions tell you to quit and say, no, I have to actually keep going. Awesome, I like that. Okay, Jeanette, I'm gonna ask you for the real definition since you... <laughs> Since you are a track person and you know what character is all about, Living definition. what would you add to what Martin said? What you live. I mean, I had nothing to add. It just made me think of, you know, all the croissants and stuff that Martin oh eats. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and the character he has to, I think, what do you do? Like Thursday is like your main day that Only you have Thursday. these that's like it. amazing croissants. Thursday morning, that's it. No more. Thursday. Thursday is croissant day. Yes. But yeah, character is that inner strength. Strength. That's what it is. It is the ability to say no to ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's the ability to push ourselves to do something we don't want to do. And it's resiliency. It's what makes us get up when we've been knocked down. And why is this so important? I've got a quick stat for all of us. This is about college kids. It's from Forbes magazine just in August 2021 about college kids heading back to campus anxious, depressed, mm. and burnt out. I won't read all of the statistics, but basically it sums up anxiety, depression, and burnout as being at absurdly high levels uh, in August 2020, right in the middle of the pandemic. Wow. And then to August 2021, they just jumped up to astronomical levels. Wow. In fact, it says two thirds of students who are no longer in college are not in college due to a mental health issue. Mm. So why are these numbers so high? One of the things I think is that we try to live fast and we live from activity to activity, which is something I can do. We can live for enjoyment, trying to do as much as we can so that we don't miss out, so that mm -hmm. we don't feel like we're being left behind. And we put a lot of attention into those activities but not a lot of attention into our character and into our internal strength. And today we want to take some time to slow down and take a look at and examine and take some time to build our character. There's really three steps we're going to talk about to developing internal strength. It's winning the inside game. We've got to slow down so that we can speed up. And then we've got to trust the process. I want to hand it over to Martin and Jeanette. And, and you guys talk to us a little bit about winning the inside game. What does that mean? Now, when I think of winning the inside game, this scripture comes to mind. In Psalm 51, verse 6, it says, Surely you desire integrity in the inner self. You teach me wisdom deep within. And when I think of that, God cares about my inside life. And oftentimes, you know, I run away and I avoid the uncomfortable emotions that can happen on the inside, but I realize and I'm still learning that God cares less about my behavior, but cares more about what's going on on the inside. I feel like, you know, now 17, I had just moved from Benin uh, to New York. And up until then, had spoiled bread, had everything. <laughs> I didn't have to do any, I had chauffeurs. All, I didn't have chauffeurs. to do chauffeurs. everything, chauffeurs, right? Chauffeurs, you did not. He, he didn't mention the maids. <laughs> and then, 
At 17, I moved to New York wow. with very limited amount of money. And my father says, Martin, you're an American citizen, figure it out. Wow. No more chauffeurs. No more. Taxi drivers. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, I gotta get a job. I need to figure out life. So it was a major wow. shift. But then I looked for every job. I was 17, no experience, never worked in my life. And only McDonald's hired me. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, okay. <laughs> All right, how am I going to do this? So mm. I started working at McDonald's. Right. Worked 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day. I came from Africa, hot and humid. It was snowing. It was a major shift in my life. That's amazing. But that was God beginning to develop my character. Wake up early, go to work, deal with, not to offend any New Yorkers out there, not the <laughs> nicest people, they were rude, <laughs> giving my food. But it was the start of me having to learn how to actually work in character and do things that I didn't feel like doing, but I look back at that experience, it was perfect, I needed that. I, 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 it was a huge defining moment to teach me how to work on the inside life. That's an amazing uh, story. Let me ask you this, this question. When you were having to wake up in the morning and when you were having to do things you had never had to do before, what were some of the feelings that you experienced? What was some of the resistance oh internally that you had? I was angry. You know, when the customers were rude to me, I'm like, do you know who I am? <laughs> No, nah, they didn't know who I was. <laughs> okay, wait, I really need to ask you this. I've never asked you this before. When you got that job, had you already watched Coming to America? You know what? <laughs> I did, but I didn't make the connection back then. <laughs> I was too cold. I was freezing to think. I was too cold to be thinking about coming to America. Sure. Oh but, gosh. you know, I felt angry. Really I felt embarrassed. Yeah. I wondered, man, why is this happening to me? Yeah. I was part of a, uh, I was going to Fordham. I was part of a, a Bible talk, what we call Let's Talk Night, where I would go and I was at Fordham University and there was only Fordham University students. I had got into Temple Business School, but I felt out of place. Mm. Um, everybody said, oh, this is my major at Fordham. And I was like, you know what? Well, I, I work at McDonald's. and uh, But it was all really good for me to not be yeah. so consumed with what I look like and say, hey, this is part of the process. So anger, embarrassment, a lot of insecurity. But looking back at that time, I, yeah, I, it was very, very important, and I loved it actually. Yeah, that's an amazing story, Jeanette. What about you with winning the inside game? What does that look like for you? Different because I actually have like emotional health challenges, so I have the battle of my own emotions, right? Like the normal emotions, worry, doubt, fear, anger, all that stuff. But then I also have to like figure out the emotional health part, mm. and I'm like, what's what? So. Winning the inside life, I kind of feel like I'm losing <laughs> starting off and I have to like really fight to get to the other side. Like the Psalms, I love the Psalms. I love those because mm -hmm. they express a lot of emotions. And I didn't know how to do that before, like finding out about God. I was just mad most of the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> and Psalm 31, um, verse 22 and 24, it says, In my distress, I said, God cannot see me, but you heard my prayer when I cried out to you for help. All you who put your hope in the Lord, be strong and brave. And I love this scripture because these kinds of scriptures, one, like there's a lot of distress. <laughs> that I can feel. And so this scripture helped me go, okay, like I, I can get out of this mm -hmm. and I can see God, I can hear God and I can actually win. Um, and I also learned that I can't do it by myself because I like to do it by myself, like figure it all out, but that I need the scriptures to help me. And then the Psalms, they just help you pray. They're like really good templates for that. Mm -hmm. um, but also I need people to help me. Because I can't figure it out by myself all the time. Mm -hmm. So That's fantastic. I think what I'm hearing you say is that the winning the inside game is you use the Bible and you can use the Psalms as a template to kind of guide you through how to express those emotions and what's mm -hmm. going on inside. I think that's really great. So, Margo, let's... let's Let me ask just really quick, Jeanette. I think... Um, I think it's pretty amazing what, what you've had to do, the things you've had to overcome. Um, there's some pretty amazing things that have happened because of that, right? Like... Um, you were talking about, you were telling me the other day, even like about your mom, right? Mm -hmm. Why don't you share that story really quick about how you learned how to, because you took time to deal with things that, you know, whether it be your emotional health or your, the sins inside or whatever, you ended up, you know, having an incredible thing that happened because of your mom, because you worked on the things internally. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely um, had a lot of things. I was like pretty shut down as like growing up. Shut down meaning I'm happy, mm-hmm. I'm having a good time, but you are not going to find out much about how I feel about anything, except for if I'm mad at you, because that's easy, right? Um, but um, over the years, like just learning to read the Bible and get something out of it, process it, all that stuff. Like I was able to like have conversations with my mom Mm -hmm. over the years and just with friends. And, you know, eventually it led to, she became a disciple two years ago, right before, you know, pandemic. I think working on the inside life definitely was a huge part of her seeing that, just sharing what I'm learning, what I'm seeing, not necessarily like, here's a scripture mom, but just being honest with her. Having the courage that you could, you could talk about things that are really difficult inside, talk about sin, talk about insecurities. Yeah. Talk about, like, you're a major runner. I was going to ask you a question about that a little bit. And so you have that part in you, the not to quit, but you had to learn how to do that internally too, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh... Oh, I'm a quitter. Yeah. But yeah, let's not get that <laughs> confused. Yeah, yeah. But yes, if you want to be great in sports, you cannot quit. Yeah. And yeah. that helped you eventually be able to impact your mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. That's amazing. So let me yeah. ask you, Margot, to, yeah. to, to work on our inside life and to develop internal strength. A lot of times we have to slow down yeah. and not go from activity to activity. So, so why don't you talk about slowing down and the importance of that? Yeah, I think there's a term I think um, that I, I think Martin shared with me the other day that was called that called, that's talks about slow down to speed up. And it kind of sounds like opposite. But um, that is that's a big phrase because. Basically, what it means is that instead of living our lives at a frenzy pace, afraid we're going to miss out on being left behind, which I think is FOMO, right? That's, yeah. that's what I hear my teen boys telling me, at least. We need to slow down and um, understanding that if we take more time to let God unpack who we are and develop some depth, then our lives will grow more in the long run. And, um, and you know, Jeanette, when you were a sprinter, right, that's what you were. Yeah. What are some things that you did to calm to slow down in order to really run a fast race? Uh, well, one thing is when you're running, I mean, Scott would know this, everyone's cheering for you, which is really great, except for it made me really anxious when I was going to start my race. So maybe after about like the second meet, I was like, you guys, don't say anything. Like, don't cheer. Don't say, let's go, Jeanette. Don't even say, let's go team, unless somebody else is in the race <laughs> on my team. <laughs> Just, I, But I was like, after the gun goes off, Feel free yeah. to cheer. Yeah. But I just needed that like quiet because yeah. it made me anxious yeah. <laughs> when they're like, go. So I'm like, I'm going to mess up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Because that actually reminds me of the scripture in Psalm 94, 19. It says, whenever my busy thoughts were out of control, the soothing comfort of your presence calmed me down and overwhelmed me with delight. I love that scripture because, you know, when I was in college, my inside world was out of control. There was so much guilt and hurt, insecurity, bitterness, and pride swirling around inside. I couldn't figure out how to process it at all or understand myself. To avoid it all, I became increasingly busy. I was social chairman of my sorority. I was little sister to the fraternity. I was um, a ball girl for the football team. I was in a chemistry, you know, study group. I actually was in the um, uh, athletic uh, Christian group, and I wasn't even an athlete. <laughs> and so, you know, in fact, the more out of control I felt internally, the busier I became on the outside. Mm-hmm. And um, I had what's called Gordon McDonald refers to as the sinkhole syndrome. You remember when you were in the city, Scott, and there was that. Um, there was that house, I forget who you said it was, and the underneath, they had neglected so much the foundation and the soil that the house literally just fell through. What? And, um, and, and that's what happens. When I, whenever I don't pay attention to what's going on inside, and um, it, the outside world starts to collapse in on itself, and I implode. 
Even though I, in college, even though I was acing the test, I was failing nursing school, the actual part of nursing, which would be important if you want me to be your nurse, because I couldn't <laughs> focus. I, I started giving up on my dream. I actually started giving up my dream. And I started thinking, well, maybe I could be a social director on a cruise ship. <laughs> like my dream started falling because I was so, I didn't know how to control what was going on inside. Thankfully, God stopped me and taught me how to focus my life and tackle this internal weakness. I became a Christian and became a pediatric nurse and eventually a supervisor. You know, I see the same sinkhole syndrome in many of us today. You know, Martin, um, how do you get out of it when you're sinking? When I'm sinking, the first thing I usually have to do is admit that I am sinking. Yeah. Because I can very easily go in denial. I'm not sinking. I'm fine. I can see other. <laughs> you're sinking. You're sinking, Jeanette. I start accusing people. But the first thing that typically helps me is when I stop and say, I'm actually sinking. Yeah. I'm afraid. I'm overwhelmed. I don't know what to do. And when I'm that vulnerable with God and Jeanette and other friends, that's usually the first step. But when I'm not honest about it, I'm not getting out and I'm getting everyone down with me. (laughs) Everyone around me sinking with me because of my negativity and complete pride and denial. Yeah. It's great. So I think what I'm learning through all of this is that to develop our internal strength, it's a process that God puts us through. Mm -hmm. It's winning the inside game and working on that. And it's to do that, we have to slow down Mm -hmm. in order to do that and not just go from activity to activity, which I think is really easy for us to do. And in it, it's just trusting the process that God's putting us through. There's a great scripture that uh, uh, can kind of wrap all of this together. It's in Psalm 84, verses 6 and 7. It says, even when their paths wind through the dark valley of tears. So all of our life's life's paths are going to wind around and go through some very difficult and painful times. Mm -hmm. They dig deep to find a pleasant pool where others find only pain. Mm-hmm. So when we're in those wow. difficult moments, yeah. like at McDonald's in the cold New York, <laughs> when we've never done it before, I think what this is telling us is lean into those moments and take it as a time to dig deeper, not try to avoid it and get out of it as fast as we can. Uh, he goes on to say, he gives them a brook of blessing filled mm-hmm. with the rain of an outpouring. They grow stronger and mm-hmm. stronger with every step forward, and the God of all gods will appear before them in Zion. So if we just can keep taking steps forward, God's putting us through this process of growing internally. I remember from my track days, my coach would have us just run crazy amount of miles the first two weeks of practice. We would run 110 miles a week for two weeks. Oh my gosh. And we would all be just completely dead and broken down. And then we would go and compete and just get killed because the other team, we were just so dead, tired. Our bodies were tired. The other team would kill us and he would just keep telling us, it's okay. You gotta trust the process. It's okay. Don't worry about it. It's the beginning of the season. And then by the end of the season, our bodies had adjusted and we were like peaking and everybody else was really tired. And so when it counted, we were in really great shape and we would just destroy people. And our opponents were like, (laughs) man, we ran against these guys at the beginning of the season and killed them. And now they're destroying us. (laughs) It was a lesson for me. When you're not winning, it doesn't mean that you should quit or that you're terrible or this is the worst thing. It means there's a process that we're going through to get us stronger. And if we can just keep going forward and take steps forward, God's going to make us stronger. And at just the right time, we'll peak and we'll be ready for whatever life throws at us. I think that's really important to trust the process. Martin, why don't you wrap this all up with with a couple of thoughts for us? You know, it's been uh, it's been great, you know, talking about this because I definitely see a big need for internal strength for me. But when, when I think of it all and I think of, you know, winning the inside game, you know, and I think of slowing down to speed up, and I think of, you know, trusting the process, what really helps me is to know that God has a path for me. Mm. He has a path for me, he has something in mind for me, very unique, and he has a destiny for me. In Psalm 32 verse eight, it says, the Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. You know, I totally believe the scripture, and throughout my life, when I felt stuck, when I felt like I didn't know what was going on, when I, really slowed down and thought, actually, God knows. God has Mm. a path for me. 
I don't need to compare myself to other people. When I believe that, it gives me not only a sense of peace, but I'm like, you know, I can keep going, I can keep pushing, I don't have to quit. And it really builds my faith and inspires me to also help other people yeah. when they're going through a hard time or they feel mm. stuck, they don't know what, what is happening. Right. So it's important that we slow down and say, okay, let me run my own path. God has something for me, and I'm gonna stick in there, not just grind through it, <laughs> believe that <laughs> God has grind. the best pathway for my life. Yeah. And if I stick in there, I'll eventually see what, what God is doing. Yep. When you're in the like mix and you're like, this is terrible, what does it mean? What does it look like to stick it in there? You know, what has helped me is slowing down, like we've talked about, and trying to figure out, okay, what is God doing? Why am I going through this? Mm-hmm. Why am I feeling these things? And then taking the time to actually believe the Bible over my emotions, because yeah, there's a lot of true. times in my emotions, yeah. you know, can go all over the place. Yeah. But when I think of the Bible and say, you know what, God ha- actually has my back. When yeah. I look at my entire life and all the things God did and all the ways he trained me, that really builds my faith. That's I'm like, awesome. you know, he's worked in the past, he's still gonna work. And that yeah. gives me a calm and a peace and helps me keep going. Yep. That's good. Awesome. Well, that wraps it up. Thank you guys for all mm-hmm. of your sharing and thank you guys for being a part of this. That wraps it up. Thank you for joining us at this Let's Talk Night. Have a great conversation.